Hi, today we are going to make this cracked mesh effect in Blender. Let's start. I have this head statue model from Fab. We are going to make some cracks appear in certain part of this mesh. To select that area, I go to weight paint mode and start painting. Set your strength to 1. You can adjust the radius from here or by pressing F. I paint the areas where I want the cracks to be. By the way, you need to have a decent mesh density to do a decent weight paint job. If your mesh is low res, you can add a subdivision modifier to add more vertices to the mesh. When you start weight painting, Blender will automatically make a new vertex group for those vertex weight data. I rename it to mass. To make the cracks, first we need a particle system. So go to the particle step, make a new particle system. Now if I play, you see particles keep spawning and falling due to gravity. For making the cracks, we need all the particles to spawn in the first frame. So I set this start and end frame to 1. Right now particle sizes are too big, so here in the viewport display, I set the display type to point and reduce the size. I changed the particles amount to 500. Set the particle lifetime to the animation length. In my case, it's 250. I don't need the particles to simulate at all. So here in the physics section, set the type to none. That will stop all the movement and interactions. These particles will represent where the cracks going to appear. Cracks will happen around these points. To limit that to the area we painted earlier, here in the vertex group section for density, I select the vertex group mass. 500 particles seems too many, so I reduce it to 100. Now in the modifier step, you can see the particles modifier already added by Blender. Below that, I add explode modifier. Let's see if I can find it. You can always type search for the modifier. In the modifier, I choose the UV map of the mesh as particle UVs. To show the cracks, first let me enable wireframes. Now when I select cut edges, it cuts the mesh around the particles. If I enable size option, all those cut pieces scale to their particle size. So in the particle setting under render, I set the particle size to 1. Now all the particles went back to their previous size. We don't need to view the particles anymore so let's set the viewport display to none. Particles are still there but we just hide it from the viewport. Now you can scale down the size and cut pieces will scale down making the cracks. Let me hide the wireframes now to see this clearly. This is great if you want uniform cracks everywhere. What I like to do is set this back to 1 and then change this randomness value. This will scale down the pieces by a random amount. Right now you can see although we distributed particles in a selected area, cracks happen in other parts of the mesh as well. There are bigger pieces compared to the others but still I don't want to see them. So back in the explode modifier, here I select the vertex group we made, then hit refresh. Whenever you make a change to the cracks, hit this refresh button to update the explode modifier. Now we have these cracks everywhere except the places we want. 
So to reverse that, we can invert the vertex group by simply clicking this button. Now we have cracks everywhere we want them. You can change this protect slider to adjust the boundary of those cracked areas. I keep it about 0.6. I forgot to show you something so let me enable the particles back. To adjust the particles distribution, you can change these distribution settings. You can play with the options to find something you like. Now back in the modifier, I add a subdivision modifier. You can keep it here after the explode modifier if you like this look but if you want to improve the cracking details, you need more high res mesh. So I drag this modifier to here. But you can see apart from smoothing out the original mesh, it doesn't really do anything to the cracks. That's because here in the particle settings, we need to enable this use modifiers stack option for the particles to use modifiers above it into its calculations. This will add a bit more detail to the cracks. Also, I don't want that overall smoothing of the surface, so I set this to simple. Now you can change the particle settings to change the cracks look. And that's how you make this cracking effect in Blender. Now let's see how we can improve this. First we have to fix a tiny issue. You see, if I go to material view, my texture is messed up. It wasn't like this before. This is happening because we use the mesh UV map here for the particle UVs. To fix it, go to mesh data, UV map and click this plus button. This will duplicate the previous UV map. Now back in the modifier, I select that duplicated UV map as the particle UVs. This way, material textures can use the original UV maps without any issues. To make an underlying surface or an underlying layer, I duplicate this mesh. Then I remove all the modifiers and particle system we made from this duplicated one. Since they are overlapping, it is a bit difficult to see, so I enable random color option in viewport shading. The second mesh is now in this green color. I go to edit mode and hit Alt S to scale down the mesh along the normals. That pushes the second mesh inwards giving us that underlying layer. To fix these small areas, I go to sculpt mode while selecting the second mesh and hold control and paint over those areas to push them in. To add thickness to this outer layer, I add a solidify modifier. Add a bit of thickness. I don't like how it changed the normals of the surface, so I right click and select auto smooth. Add a bit more thickness. Let's change the material. I select the second mesh and remove its current material. I create a new one. Then I go to the shader editor to customize the material. Delete the principal shader and add an emission shader. I want some glow in the underlying layer. To add color variation to that glow, I search for layer weight node. I hide the outer layer. Let's use this pacing option. Search for color ramp and add it here. I adjust the sliders a bit and change their colors. Plug it into the emission color and plug that into the material output. Increase the strength. I enable the outer layer. Since we no longer have the bloom option in render setting in the latest versions of Blender, we can't really see the glow that well. So let's use the real-time compositor to add that bloom back. 
I make a new window here and change it to compositor. Check this use notes option. In order to see the changes we make here in real time, we need to enable real time compositing from here. If you have a camera in the scene, select this camera option to only add compositing to the camera view. But here I select always to make changes appear in the normal render view. I have a separate method that I use to add glow or bloom to the renders but here just for now I quickly add bloom in the simplest way possible. Search for the glare node and put it in between this node. Set the glare type to bloom and quality to high. And we have bloom in real time. Now you can add some lights to the scene. Since the cracks are somewhat procedural, if you change your mind, you can come back to the particle settings and adjust the distribution for different cracking patterns. By the way, sometimes I find this auto smooth operation gives you weird artifacts when rendering animations with motion blur on. To fix that, go to cycles, enable motion blur and in the object properties under motion blur, uncheck this deformation option. That will fix the issue. And that's how you make this cracking effect in Blender. If you like to see how you can animate this into a nice crumbling pieces simulation, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out when that video drops. Huge thanks to these amazing individuals and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.